All right, and welcome back, my friends. It's been a long time, but we return tonight to the Ghosts of Salt Marsh. So, uh, I mean, I'm eager to kind of just get right back into it. Before I go, uh, are any of my players, would any of my players like to make any announcements about anything going on in their world? Mostly not. To announce anything in my world, in the yeah. new? Yeah. Anything going on your, with your Twitch or whatever? Uh, so we started, attempted a VR stream the other day. Had some folks to work out with that. But uh, really, we're uh, just kind of keeping things moving, trying to help people get affiliations and stuff like that. And uh, my channel, we're so close to uh, the 400 follower goal. So uh, I think we're like 14 or 15 followers away still working on getting custom Warzone matches together. If anybody still wants to do that, you're all more than welcome to join. But other than that, yeah, we're just cruising right now, trying some new things out. Nice, uh, nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we'll leave this. Everybody go check out the homies channel. Let's see if I can do it right. I'm a, I'm, I'm not a boomer. <laughs> hey! There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Without you, further ado, if anybody has anything else. Alright, so we will return to the Ghost of Saltmarsh. Last we had left off, your party had just finished off the reinforcements of the smugglers in the abandoned alchemist's home. You had made your way down to the cellar, finding the missing adventurer and sibling of Zimbora adventurer, uh, uh, upon finding a secret passage that revealed the smuggler's hideout, uh, Ned Shakeshaft double-crosses you and attacks you in the chaos that ensues. You fight your way in and defeat the spy, though one pirate looks for an escape and uh, opens up a tomb of undead, a fabled alchemist. You break their golden-plated uh, bones as they cower in the corners and finish off the alchemist before he burns a human skin off. The secret door behind him reveals a long forgotten laboratory. Loot up and take a rest here. Uh, loot up and take a rest here among the bones. The next morning, you wake to the sound of Sandalay and his remaining pirates returning to a ghastly scene as their compatriots lay dead. The door that they once bar barred and door shut they once barred and shut stands open. Noctis tries to bluff his way, uh, bluffs his way through impersonating the alchemist, looking to buy some time. Sambele, however, sees through Ali's attempt to deceive him and orders his goblin and scouts to attack. We find ourselves back in the basement of the alchemist's home. However, you are without one of your allies. Noctis is just gonna like immediately sit next to uh, the fallen Ollie and just kind of like slumped for a minute and you know just try to like hold her her arm or her hand and just like sit in silence for a minute. I'll join him. Maddie will join as well and he's gonna take the take Ollie's warhammer back and set it back down right on her chest. And put it there. Your, your power helped me a lot. Get that final blow. And I'll just sit with the others. Um, Bayon being young, this is actually his first time seeing like a fellow friend fall down. So he's kind of in the distance, just not sure what's going on. Like, uh, you know, watching the others and trying to figure out what the right move is, but it's like pretty, pretty angry at this moment. We should, we should take her back to town, leave this yeah. place. Yeah, I agree. Um, I know a, a, a graveyard in town. Uh, the, the owner there is, is a nice guy. Hopefully he can get us a little burial plot. Um, can we maybe build like a, a stretcher or something out of uh, something in here? Or at least gather some cloth to cover her up. 
there are ten beds out in the main smugglers hall. Yeah, Bayon will run out and grab like a bed, full sheets, full pillow. Make sure he brings a pillow. Brings it out. So as you're doing that, like I'll start, you know, trying to clean up any of the, you know, remaining. She's still not actively bleeding, hopefully, <laughs> off of Ollie and like clean the dirt off her face or anything like that. And just get her kind of like in a nice pose, um, and as as kindly as possible, uh, run her pockets. Yeah, uh, I think you should have. You should be able to view the sheet. Open it up and look. Uh, I cannot. It is party switched in the campaign. Gotcha. One second. Um. Oh yeah. Uh. Can you tell us what's in Ali's inventory? <laughs> Big draw. Yeah, let me Thank just you. pull her out. <laughs> Oh, Ellie just wants um, two of Ollie's cigars. Okay. Ollie has the cigars. She has like a, a priest pack, so there's like incense, candles, um, and then cook's utensils. Um, her holy symbol, a couple of light hammers. Um, that she uses for just like regular or used for uh, like regular uh, smithying. Uh, she's a shield, uh, priest vestments, and her warhammer and a water skin. And then uh, there's like some, there's a, a letter uh, in her pocket from her uh, guild master, uh, the finger bone that she collected some gold skeleton ribs and then 27 pieces of gold and 27 pieces of silver is there anything in there about uh, next of kin does anyone know she, the letter would probably reference that she has a sister um, we should leave her with her God's idols and everything like that. I assume so. You know, we'll put you know put her in a nice pose with the war hammer and you know clutching the holy symbol in the other hand, kind of arms crossed across her chest. Um, the letter references uh, Ruth Sath Strongforge, who is her master smithy, and she has a sister. Um, gosh, I have to look this. <laughs> uh, named uh, Yoga, uh, Y O G G E her sister's name. Oh. Um, I guess it's time to go. Take, uh, take two silver coins and place it over her eye and then kind of like wrap her up in the bed sheet to make a kind of a, an easier way for us to carry her back into town. Okay. Uh, just also as a little bit of a recap, uh, in this room, uh, you had found San Belay's room. And in that room, you had found a few interesting things. One of them being this code. Not sure what to make out of that, but you've got this code now, and you also learned of a secret entrance in the southwest of the main room. We can always come think? back to this. We can always come back to this place. I really think that we need to pay respects and take care of all these people first. Read. Yeah. I'm mighty beat up, to be honest with you. So. Resist the urge to burn this place down for now. Oh, we'll be back to do that for sure. Excellent. I hope our boat is still out there. <laughs> well, there's, all, 
Only one way to find out. We did pull it up ashore, though, so hopefully. Okay. Shall we? Everyone, uh, grab a corner here. Yes. This hammer's really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you gather your things and head back upstairs out of the abandoned home. And you are kind of walking through the house. You again, hear just the creaking of this old, old abandoned house. Now silent, completely, completely silent aside from these creaks. Um, just an empty shell many inhabitants uh, pass through this place it seems and you open the door walking outside and a rush of a uh, sea breeze kind of blows past all of you and it refreshes you and uh, feels a little a little nice in comparison to the kind of stuffy caverns and basement that you were in uh, and everybody levels up Oh, okay. Nice. Did we take a boat here? Or did we walk here? I forget. You walked. Uh, we definitely took a. Oh. I, think I thought we took we... a boat. I, Some... saying, yeah, I feel like we walked. I think you followed the the old drunk guy. Drunk, drunk guy, right? Yeah. 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 Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, if we had a boat, that makes us getting her back way easier. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh. It's about an hour walk back to Saltmarsh, and uh, a little bit longer this time as you've got uh, some precious cargo in tow. Uh, but the walk back is uneventful and very peaceful. Uh, the, tr the trail kind of leads you along the coastline, and the you know the waves and kind of lapping of the sea are rhythmic and calming. It's a very nice day, um, but. In no time at all, you return to the gates of Saltmarsh. Uh, side DM question: Do we re-roll ones on hit die? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's how I think. Oh my god! Sorry. Stand at the city gates and see two older gentlemen, guards, sitting in chairs, kind of at the uh, gateway there. They kind of have their arms folded and uh, staring at you as you approach. They furrow their brow and stand up. Everything all right? Uh, not quite. We have a friend here that passed away. We need to get through, if you don't mind. Uh, he just, he takes a step back and doesn't question it, and kind of takes off his helm, kind of puts it on his chest, just nods. That's it. And Fiona nod back. So... Far oh, how far are we away are we from her, uh, her blacksmithy? Yes, the smithy... is here. Smithy is there. So you've got a good walk into town. Probably cross over Shark Fin Bridge and make it to the Smithy. Here. Anyway you could help out with the the tow. The guards? You're asking? Yeah. Yeah, like if they know where I could we don't have to lug now. Oh, yeah, just uh get the wagon, yeah, come on. And uh he'll kind of front to the other guard and just kind of off of to the side of the city gates there's you know, uh there's still a few crates and a, a, a few barrels and surely enough there's a cart there that you could borrow. 
questions. Thank you. As we're, I guess, loading her into the cart, uh, I'll kind of peel black the, the blanket for a second and just take another look at her and I'll pull out uh, a blank card and just start sketching quickly as we kind of walk through the town with her. Okay. You pass, you pass by the barracks and the jail. Uh, you uh, also pass by what you know as the Waker Goat, uh, frequent for the loyalists, guards, um, and dwarves passing... Uh, approaching Sharkfin Bridge, you see that the carnival troop has been busy, busy at work, and they've set up many tents and stalls along Sharkfin Bridge. Uh, they are set up and ready to go, but they are still kind of like closed as they're kind of just waiting for next sunrise um, to start their carnival here in this big patch of grass are these big circus tents it seems that everything is set up and ready to go and a couple of the carny folk are just kind of like you know walking about they will uh look your way and uh kind of either break contact and kind of look down at the ground or kind of like also give you a, a knowing nod um the town of salt marsh is is busy it always is busy there are lots of people in this town um kind of turning this road you pass by the snapping line uh the kind of like the stench of like all of the fishermen that go there kind of wafts out of it as you walk by the council hall uh, stands tall before you and then finally you make it to the dwarven Yes. Uh, go find this, this blacksmith. Uh, you said it was in the letter, Ellie? Uh, yes. Um, the guildmaster. Uh, Ruth, Ruth Sath? Was that right? Yeah, it's, it's Ruth, Ruth Sath, uh, Strongforge, but Ruth Sath is in is not in Salt Marsh. Ruth oh. Sath is back in Ollie's original forge. Yeah. So you you uh, you appear at the Dwarven Anvil, a uh, blacksmith's forge that has a single anvil with a clear sign of Dwarven origins. Uh, there's a, a backlog of orders kind of hanging up from them, like ten miles long. Uh, the human smiths you find to your surprise are not dwarves. Uh, they make hooks, nails, harpoons, knives, fishing weights, much more uh, for the town of Saltmarsh. Their master smith there is an elderly uh, human named Mayfera, and her son Jasker is the uh, her best journeyman there. And you enter, uh, do you enter the anvil? Uh, yes. Yeah. Inside you find both of them working away. Um, smells of soot molten uh, metal um <clears throat> excuse me oh yeah yeah and she kind of like puts up her goggles what can I do for you uh, well um I have some awful news um it, it you should come with me then I'll, I'll lead her outside. Sorry, is this... Uh, uh, I don't know you. Is uh, I've got a lot of work here, you see. Yes, sorry. Um, it's about Ali. Um, ah, Ali, yes. Yeah, she cut off a of work uh, just today, actually. Yes. Um, or yesterday, yesterday sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, there's no easy way to say this. Um, Ali is gone. She gave her life to to save ours last night. And uh, Mayfair, she's just... ah, it's... It's... it is very bad. Kind of like wipes her brow and her forehead, and it's just very, she's very, you know, kind of dirty from all of the blacksmith work. And she just kind of like leans against the anvil. And I'll be honest, I did not know her well, uh, but she worked very hard. And um, I, 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 
don't know what to say. Does she have a uh, family in town? Friends? You know, she she kept to herself a lot of the time, and uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard. Uh, I know that uh, she doesn't follow Moradin as, as we do, and uh, I don't know. It seemed like more of like a go to work, get paid, go home kind of thing. And, uh, she really kept to herself. Do you happen to know where she lived? Oh, well, she would stay in town and uh, one of the inns. She just arrived not too many months ago. Um, well, uh, and I'll, I'll produce a, a card, like a business card, so to speak, uh, and uh, hand it to her and say, well, if, um, if you come across any more information, please. I I'm with the the carnival in town. Um, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me. Oh, yes. Sure, sure. I will yeah, I will, I will do my best, and I'll see what I, what I can do. I at least owe it to you. She was a good employee. Right. Um, are, th are there any of her things here that she left behind? Uh, not really, no. Okay, um, thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Sorry, I wasn't and... much help. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll just, um, kind of, like, put one of her hammers, uh, down. Say, I, I think she would want at least, um, or, or was there, like, a hammer that, uh, that she took from the smithy? <laughs> yeah, she should be returned. She should grab some shit. Yeah, she has a <laughs> collection of light hammers, right? You said there's a few light hammers. I'll leave one. Yeah, yeah she, they can have the one that Bayon stole from. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, just and like she like inspects it and kind of like throws it in her hand. Yeah, yeah we'll hang it up on a on a high hook <laughs> on the wall. I'll engrave her name on it. Don't worry. It's very kind. Um. Good day. And I'll Good just day. awkwardly, like, leave. <laughs> <laughs> Share right. with the rest of the party. Um, well, uh, I didn't get much information from from the uh, Forge Mistress, but uh, I'm not really sure what to do. I think, I think she stayed in an inn. We might be able to... Um... You know, you, you mentioned a, a forge master and a sister in the letters. Perhaps we can see if there's some type of courier that runs between that area and ours and uh, send word. Uh, for now, I think it might be wise to get her into a, a resting place. And Craig down at the cemetery is, is a good person, so we can maybe bribe our way in a little bit. He should be able to get us in. Or I have a friend, but I haven't seen her in a bit. Well, whatever we can do to do right by her. Um, is there like a, a temple of Joramy or anything by any chance in town? or? There is not a temple to Joramy, but there is a temple of Broke to Broken. It's God of Sea. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of stomped on this situation too. It's... <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if like going to a, a temple uh, not of uh, the god that she worships <laughs> is like <laughs> disrespectful. Especially the water god, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the forge. <laughs> I mean, I think I think our only options are to bury her, or I think yeah. we I think we bury her as uh, I've seen these things before and decom. Decomposition sets in fast, and uh, yeah. we can send word to her family. Hopefully, find a way to let them know where she is. Should yes. should we she... commit her to a a, a pyre instead? A Could forge? do that too. Yeah. 
think she might like that actually. Make sure we take a, a family heirloom or something she has on. Send it back in her letter. Maybe some gold. I don't know. Graveyard Master might be able to help us with that as well. It's quite yeah, handy. He's a, I think he's a good spot to start at least. Yeah. Either Agreed. that or we find somebody that could bring it back, but I don't <laughs> think that's going to happen. To take out a loan. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a fat loan, my friend. Uh, I'm sad for her, but I didn't know her that well. <laughs> I mean, Bam, Bam just follows knock this lead, so he's, <laughs> Okay, alright. 1200 gold's like a life fortune, are you kidding me? I just met you like two days ago. <laughs> it's 2500, by the way. 2500 gold, peace yeah. out. All right. So, are you heading for the graveyard, the cemetery, or the temple, yeah. or what? Okay. All right. In the graveyard, yeah. The next. I think the funeral pie is a good idea, but yeah. 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 Just do a thing. The next few houses are uh, buildings are are personal homes. It seems they are private homes, uh, and they are very large, very fine houses. Uh, the path leads down, uh, and you can see the Mariner's Guild Hall is there. Um, there is also the Carpenter's Guild Hall, and uh, also uh, what they, what some of the townsfolk call the Crabber's Cove. Uh, the buildings that have like since been kind of abandoned, and they are weathered and uh, by the sea. And since then, thousands of crabs have taken up residence in the crumbling remains of that. But you turn up left uh, and head up the path to uh, pass by the Temple of Procan, and in its shadow sits the great the cemetery. Uh, the town's cemetery is well kept, and uh, many of its graves are a little more than memorial stones for those who have died at sea. Uh, and yeah, it's otherwise empty aside from one man who is currently uh, on his knees, kind of guarding uh, in a collection of graves. In this distance, does that look to be Craig? Craig. It is indeed a male half-orc. You would know to be Craig. It's kind of lit out a little as a... Like, hey, Craig! It kind of like... Stands up, like cracks his back, waves to you. I kind of like point to the cart, I guess. You know, Let's see if he. He kind of just interest. clambers up and <laughs> and then keeps stretching out, cracking his back, wipes his forehead again, kind of waddles over to you. Good evening. What's going on? Uh, we. Lost a, a friend, a newly found friend, uh, Jedad, as Ellie put it, uh, protecting us. Swung a mighty hammer, and we were hoping to uh, perhaps set up a, a funeral pyre. Is that what we all agreed upon? Seems fitting for it, right? I think that's pyre. appropriate. Ought to burn this body up here. That's a little, uh, little, uh, little bit of an eyesore. Hell yeah, I'd tell you what, uh, hold on a second, and uh, he kind of waddles over and uh, retrieves one of the clerics, actually, from the temple. Uh, and one of the clerics that he retrieves is actually a dwarf. He, you know, he looked at the body, he sees a dwarf, he goes and gets a dwarf uh, priest. And the dwarf kind of crumblers over, he's got a nice white staff that he holds, kind of looks over. Oh, Terribly sorry for your loss. Thank you. I understand you're looking uh, to, to take care of this, this body. Put Something rest. That, yeah. All right, and he kind of puts on some glasses and retrieves a scroll from his his uh, his his coat or his chest pocket. All right. Uh, she have any last uh, will? Uh, any last final wishes? Uh, 
well, I don't know if this counts, but she told me to walk through fire, and I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Just the funeral pyre, you know. <laughs> I think that's maybe what she meant, yeah. Oh, I see, I see. And it's, it's good to, it's good to, you know, it is good. But, uh, don't know much about this, this dwarf here, but I do know that we dwarves... We return to the mountains. We, we are born in the mountains and we live our lives through the dirt and stone. Uh, I think it is fitting to return this dwarf and your friend back to the dirt and stone so that one day she may also grow among the mountains. I mean, she did speak of family back then. I think we should make the trek to go see her family. I think we should definitely um, send word. Did you say her family lives here in town? She said she had mentioned something about them living, you know, in the mountains, living close oh. by. So mountains. he's telling us many, many mountains closest to the kingdom of Kiel and is the Crystal Mist Mountains. Very far away from here. What do you recommend we do? Oh, well, it's up to you. I'm not sure. You could always stop by the East Town Hall and there are couriers there. Go to bring the party back. Do you have any uh, services that might keep the body until someone next of kin could come to retrieve it? Uh, sorry, I'm looking for the services that I posted. Does he have one of those? He does not have a repose. Uh, so I can keep it around the temple for about a, t a week or so, about a ten day, and that's about it. I mean, I, I guess I don't know how long we could carry a body around town. <laughs> no, I think it's. I mean, I think it is what it is. And you worked in a forge, lived by the fire. I by the so, fire, right? You didn't seem the type to conform to. Norms. No, Dwarven, Dwarven or other eyes. She also came here by herself with no... No, didn't talk to anybody, didn't... So... Maybe she doesn't want to be known. Born Met her fire. to the flame. I, but she Born in fire, known. forged in fire. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see. Anyway, we could set up one of those, you know, for the uh, canoe in hay, in hay. You set it out to sea and. Uh, Viking funeral. Viking funeral, <laughs> that's it. Sure. Cool. Uh, sure. Never we can, home. We can, we can, <laughs> of course. Then maybe she's just, you know, an adventure is an adventure. She'll be where she is. A final adventure. Exactly. Do you have a bow besides a crossbow? It's, it's kind of do. small. I don't, I, okay, good. I don't know I do. if this will get the job done. Yeah, I have a... Got a bow that okay, should be able to do it. Sure, sure. Uh, whatever you'd like. I do my best. And just give me a little bit to prepare a bow to me. I'll be... Uh, I'll meet you down in Crabber's Grove. You're you're all right to get down there. Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, we should be fine. There's a path Wait. that's cleared out. The crabs haven't gotten there yet. I'll put the boat there. Leave her with you, though, right? We take her with us. I yeah. I'll, I'll you take you you take the body. I will meet you there with the boat. Oh, okay. All right. 
<laughs> this is the most awkward <laughs> attempt to try to bury a friend. <laughs> this is going to be our running joke. First, we just bury I someone on the it. beach, and now we're like, do we burn you, throw you in the mountain, or a fucking Viking funeral? <laughs> How we met was burying a body, and it was yeah, yeah. felt more casual. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you are you going to meet them down at Crabber's Grove? Yeah. If I can funeral, it's the best metal version. It's fire, it's got the boat, we're ready. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you head down to Crabber's Grove, and yeah, this place is crawling. Like, you can't even see the ground with all of the crabs that kind of scuttle on the scuttle around. All of the buildings are just kind of covered in barnacles, and kind of the smell of the sea is very prominent here. Um, and this this dwarven cleric will uh, take a little bit and um, Nebayon, give me a perception check. I rolled a twice. Uh, ten. Yeah. Okay. So you looking around. The cleric is still not here. Uh, Ballista, you're watching this group of people just walk down here into this Crabber's Grove. Uh, you are currently kind of shouldered up against one of the walls of the kind of like ruining buildings. There's kind of like crabs at your feet and stuff. And you're just watching them. Uh, they haven't seemed to notice you yet. After a little while, uh, the cleric will return, wheeling down a small canoe and a large bundle of firewood with him, and uh, he will kind of help you set up this boat uh, and do his best to make some kind of funeral pyre. Uh, it's not usually what he would do, but he uh, sets it up fine enough, and you're ready to go. He stands there, like, ready to push it into the water. Any final words? Um, I'll I'll lean down uh, to where Ollie's ear is, and I'll I'll um, I'll whisper, uh, "Sail through fire, my friend." Uh, and I'll I'll light one of her cigars and and kind of um, not smoke it, <laughs> uh, but like wave it about, almost like incense in a set in a sense. Um, I'll take the card that I drew of her and like finish the last details and just tap it to her forehead. Um, and then for the next like minute or so before while this is happening and everyone's saying goodbye, um, just gonna weave like illusions using minor illusion in the air of like her with the hammer, like forge fire, just like the symbology of kind of how I knew her for uh, a minute or two. Um, and then can the three of you make a wisdom save? <laughs> oh shit. Sorry. Where it's is... the first one. Uh... Nine. <laughs> nine? Okay. I got a nine as well. And then um, you guys get like really enthralled by these. Uh, everyone except for Maddie. Maddie, you're kind of out of it, but. Uh, and I just say quietly, forgive yourselves. And you feel charmed and compelled to forgive yourself. Nice. Maddie's gonna walk up to Ollie's body and. Kind of just make sure everything's in proper form, arms right, adjust the hammer, make sure everything's proper, and then just kind of like take his hands over like a cross symbol over her head and just say, forgive me, I will fight this thing with fire. And then he'll back away. Beona takes like this really elaborate, um, it's like lace, old chain he has on his neck. He takes it off and put, places it around her neck and doesn't say anything, just kind of kisses her on the forehead. And... This is his arrow, ready for what's gonna happen. Guys, I love forehead kisses. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The cleric looks to you all. Everyone now, comp now finished. 
gives a nod. Gives a nice good shove, and the boat slowly begins to drift out onto the water. Um, uh, sorry. Ellie will. Sorry, Ellie will uh, sing a um, the only like dwarven hymn she knows. Which is probably some sort of like body tail. I don't know. <laughs> We're drinking beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will immediately it's start perfect for her. With you. Nice. Skippy, Skippy will immediately start like how as you start singing howling with you. All right. Uh, the cleric nods to you, uh, Freya, and he will kind of like affix this kind of wet wrap of this cloth that is kind of smells of this weird smell and then he will kind of spark his fingers and ignite it take your shot All right. i hope i don't miss this you can take the shot with advantage sorry okay okay 11 T 10 is what you need so you're good <laughs> oh, thank God! <laughs> I really thought that was going to be that scene where <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, you have to just keep shooting. Somebody else takes it over. First shot. The boat sails, not sails, but floats. Uh, now lit ablaze into. Well, I need a drink. Yeah. To Ollie. <laughs> to Ollie. <laughs> Ollie. Ollie. All right. All right. Is that yeah. a carnival of yours ready? Uh, Use for a distraction. <laughs> I probably won't be performing, but I I'm sure they're um. They're open for some entertainment. Shall we? I could, I could use some pickpocketing. <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> Just <start> walking away. <laughs> I also did not hear that. And the cleric gives a nod and just walks back up the hill up towards the temple. <laughs> Boy. And looks over to knock the scenes like, I mean, just lost a gold chain. Need another one. Not wrong. <laughs> clear. I said we clear our minds. We go back and take vengeance on that place. Yes. All right. I'll uh, I'll take a, a slight inhale of the cigar just out of curiosity. <laughs> I'll actually join you too. Hey, Ski. I mean, there are there are still oh. like there are still like. <laughs> Three dozen more cigars that you had found in Ollie's pack. Oh, nice! So just, just like, oh, we're all lighting one then, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're doing some uh, some uh, Sandlot shit right now, and we're all smoking stogies <laughs> till we get sick at the carnival. All right, where to? The carnival. Yeah, you said it's still like early day, right? It's not the middle of the oh, day. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, sorry, at this point it is it is late evening and uh, you had seen the carnival is just uh, they're, they're set up ready to go, but they are you know, like closed for the day until tomorrow Gotcha Dinner Oh, yeah I guess we eat Yes Select ourselves We will meet somebody yes. else, eh? This place is full of adventurers. Very true. All right. We uh, head back to the net, or you guys want to hang out somewhere else tonight? Well, we... something better than Applebee's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to the to the to the, to the tourist spot where all of the where all of the new people come? No, well, no, you're right. Not tonight. That's exhausting, right? I see. Yeah, dive bar it is. <laughs> we should um, talk to that uh, drunk fellow who. Gave us the right. tip, right? Whereabouts, yeah. How he is. I wonder if the cleric has a second boat for him. Oh shit. Maybe. 
Oh, I found some friends in here the other day, too. They're probably about to leave. Maybe they'll be in there. Let's see. Yeah, we can ask, um... My friend at the empty net. Uh, <laughs> Kreb Shanker. Kreb Shanker. Is the owner uh, of the empty net. I can ask Kreb about uh, maybe getting a courier that could locate this Master Forge smith. It's not a bad idea. We go to the other tavern. My spot. You know, we'll be bombarded with questions, so that's, that's mm. best not to do that. Well, shall we head back? Cause really, fuck these crabs, and he's just gonna like yeet one, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> off into the distance. Crabs make for good. Oh, must have never eaten one. A bayon will chomp down on one. Yeah. <laughs> a bayon, you're supposed to cook it first. Ah, yeah. uh, you cook it. I can cook it. I oh, like it like anyway, this. To... What's your AC, bayon? To, to the <laughs> Sir. What's your AC? <laughs> 14. Yeah, the crab, like, just before you bite on it, tries to pinch you. <laughs> Misses. Fast. You are, yeah, you're able to chomp down on this alive, just... uncooked crab. <laughs> what? Cat-like re cat -like reflexes, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't like to fight with my food. Sometimes, sometimes it's fun. Better. You cook it and then you dip it in butter, my friend. Butter, whatever. Matty. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, where to? To the empty net we go, <laughs> <laughs> You walk back through town, sun setting, and uh, kind of people walking around, igniting street lamps and. Everything seems mostly very calm. And uh, back here, uh, you find the empty net once again crossing over the Shark Fin Bridge, partially supported by stilts driven into the harbor waters. Uh, you return to this rickety tavern. Um, inside, you find a few people. Uh, one of them being the drunk that led you to the abandoned home in his. Uh, stool once more. Uh, Kreb Shanker kind of leans back, giving you a nod as you walk in. Uh, there is a tiefling, a redskin tiefling, sitting in the corner of the bar. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Ballista, you see these people uh, send off a a uh, fiery boat, and they leave. Uh, do I smell, like, cigar smoke? Yeah, they, they were all smoking stogies right there, just stinking up the area. Uh, she'll kind of, like, kick off a couple crabs and then, uh, come from behind the, like, ledge she was kind of chilling behind, and she'll look for, like, discarded, like, cigars. <laughs> like anyone who just left one, and if there's one intact, she'll like pick it up and smoke it. I'm sure. Well, abandoned. I'm sure. Does yeah. abandoned any, really like it? See this? Sorry, I'm getting a little tiny wimey. Uh, you had already left, and um, oh, she okay. finds she finds a uh, an old bouquet that Bayon didn't like. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, just back in the bathroom. Gotcha. Okay. And like finding that she'll probably like be intrigued because she is like a weird little street rat and she'll kind of follow them um from like a pretty great distance like she'll keep like blocks ahead of them um and she'll just kind of like uh be generally interested in in these people um but mostly she's just looking to like pick up more scraps So yeah, you enter the empty net to find a few patrons and the owner. Um, I'll just like wave to Crab and be like, uh, this is Ellie. She's fucking good people. 
He just, Thank you. I think. <laughs> yeah, just don't make any trouble now. It's, it's all good. And he'll, he'll beeline up. Can I get uh, three shots of whiskey and a beer? Sure. It'll be eight copper pieces uh, for the shot and four for the beers. I'll just put down a, a full gold piece and he'll just slam all three immediately <laughs> and take the beer <laughs> and like just you can just see visibly decompress from like the longest day. <laughs> Alright, give me a constitution save. <laughs> Alright. Nineteen. I'll, I'll just have one shot of whiskey. Same. <laughs> You fried fish for me. It. You're able to, to stomach it and no problem. Sorry, what's that? Uh, just one shot of whiskey for, for me. Shot of whiskey. Same. Yep. Same. Yep. Eight copper, eight copper. Oh, fried fish, please. But yeah, I got something in the back here. Yeah. See what you I got. It's okay. It's always good. <laughs> All right, if you insist. He'll pour the two beers and begrudgingly head to the kitchen to make a like a fried fish basket. Uh, the drunken man will turn to face our group. You already you came back. You lived. It's what? Is, whoa! Whoa! Hey! <laughs> I told you it's it's a haunted place. You went there and 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 you lived. Here, yeah, aren't we? You're an asshole. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm an asshole. Right how did I do? How am I an asshole? You guys just left me. Wait, no, I did. I leave? Yeah, yeah, you. What? Ish. Just Have any gold on you? Shot of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Are you paying for these drinks, eh? If you want, I can take you to another secret spot for another five gold. Thaumaturgy, his eyes turn black and he just stares at him like it's the most demonic look. <laughs> and he just like, <laughs> turns his head away. Demons, he's possessed. He's possessed. And Craig's just like, all right, all right. Settle down. He's not the one full of spirits. Right, well, actually, he is now. But. <laughs> yes, now yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zing! Ballista, are you uh, tailing these people still? You see them enter the, the tavern. Yeah, I mean, it, I assume it would be a place that I'm, like, relatively familiar with. So I'll, uh, I'll kind of go in without making a lot of noise and sit in kind of like a corner booth kind of thing. Uh, and. You adventurers, uh, what what do they see as this person walks in? Um, she's a Ballista is a pale, like elven woman. She stands about six feet tall. Um, she wears like a a like full length uh, charcoal black leather duster that's like definitely seen some time uh, and it has like crimson red trimmings black pants a black tunic and a ribbed charcoal gray vest um she also has uh like uh like really um blunt uh bangs and and long kind of like oil slick back black hair that she wears with like a brown australian uh rancher hat with um, and her pointed elven ears kind of like stick out from her hair and there's like dozens of like silver clips uh, down the side uh, and cuffs um, and then across her chest uh, she wears uh, like a clay red uh, leather bandolier that holsters like several dozen like small green vials uh, and then fixed to her back is like a very large, like mechanical looking crossbow. Um, and she has a, a piercing in her septum that looks as if somebody just cut a crossbow bolt and stuck it through her nose. Yeah. The drip. Rad. Right behind you. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Right behind you, Ballista, is uh, kind of storms in. 
this very, very well, well dressed man uh, who kind of stands with a very, uh, I don't know, just the, his vibe is very arrogant. Uh, he's very, he stands up very straight and tall, and he is being escorted by two uh, armed guards into the empty net. He uh, kind of. T- kind of just like, excuse me, excuse me, and kind of rushes in and uh, kind of goes right to the bar. And, uh, uh Kreb, yeah, Kreb, uh, just talking over people, just trying to get uh, Kreb's attention. And, and, oh, oh, and he will kind of nod to you guys and go talk to this guy at the end of the bar. Could I try and, like, trip one of his guards on the way? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um... The Bayon's gonna also like immediately eye this guy down as soon as he starts being all pompous. Um, Money. Are you trying to do so <laughs> stealthily? No. <laughs> all right. Um, give me the. Give me an athletics check. Open this guard. That's a natural 20 minus 1 is 19. <laughs> okay. One second. Welcome, Ballista. <laughs> <laughs> Right. The uh, the guard, you you kind of s- stick out a heel as the guard is making a sharp uh, marched turn, and just as he does so, you catch his ankle, and the guard comes toppling over, crashing into one of the chairs, and the uh, prim proper uh, rich nobleman kind of. What are you doing? Get up! You are, are you kidding me? Get up right now! And the guard kind of stands up, oh, uh, 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 and he like looks to you, and then looks back to the guy. And he's just, oh, oh, sorry, and uh, just stands to attention to the guy. Maddie's chuckling at the end of the bar, at the other side, watching <laughs> spits out his beer a little bit, and the guy falls falls over. Uh, and she'll say, "Oh no! Look out!" <laughs> Seeing all this happen, uh, Noctis will turn around, kind of like drunkenly, whip his head around. Bali? And he's just gonna get up and like stumble drunk over to Ballista and just like give her a big hug and be like, I had a day, Bali. You gotta come on, sit down here. And I, I owe you this from that last job at the graveyard. And I'll give her the 26 gold uh, sack that he took off of uh, uh, Ollie. Uh, yes, you you did owe me. That's it. We're uh, oh, we're good now. <laughs> He's just gonna like fall back down into a chair. Uh, Bayon's gonna run up and just be like, "I really like that. I like your style. How do you say we steal these some monies?" <laughs> Uh, she um, just like takes the shot and then just looks at him and looks at Noctis and looks at him. She's like, "Who the fuck is this?" <laughs> Bayon, he's like, he's like my kid. Bayon, he's he reminds me of an old friend. He's he's cool. Don't worry about him. He's good. It's like you know the pencil tricks you can do with your fingers. <laughs> it's like doing that with a with like a like a little dagger right now. Then I'll like point over. I'll point over at Maddie and Ellie and introduce them to uh, that, that Maddie. Uh, that's that's Ellie. Um, Ellie's with the circus. Come on, guys, come, 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 hang out. This this list is really cool. <laughs> Matt, Maddie will approach her. I like your style. You've got some spunk. You'll fit in with us very well, Lee. Uh, Ellie Isn't will. Matty? <laughs> Ellie will uh, somewhat tipsily uh, try to maintain decorum and give like a you know a bow say charmed i'm sure uh belisa will like pull her her cattle hat down and she'll just be like ma'am <laughs> please no 
uh, Ellie, it's just fine. Would you like some fish? He's got like fried shit all up <laughs> in his fur and like it's delicious. Uh, oh. no. Okay. All right. I'm gonna fuck myself then. Um, can Belisa like she wa she's gonna like smell them? Do they smell like smoke? Make a perception check. With advantage, you're standing right in front of them. I have advantage on this anyway. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they definitely, definitely smell like cigars. Oh, I think I did nature by accident. Sorry. Oh, it's alright. I'll take the 19 and then, and then yeah, sure. 17. Alright. <laughs> oh, it's the same mod, so 21 is good. They definitely smell like cigar smoke. Let's just kind of look at Noctis and, like, uh, be like, is there something, uh, you haven't told me? Oh, yeah. He reaches down and just, like, pulls out a bunch of the cigars, puts one in his mouth backwards, and then, like, rolls them across the table. And then he goes to, like, light it for a second. He's like, uh, uh, and gives her that one, too. <laughs> Uh, she'll just kind of like quickly put them in her duster and she'll uh, be like, I didn't, uh, we've never done uh, boats, only boxes. This is a little surprising for you. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we lost, we, we lost a friend today, so, ta-da, this is what I'm doing. And no, we sent her on the boat, yeah, so, uh, you know. Sounds like a good idea, and you can't steal her shit, so ha 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 ha. I don't swim, so... <laughs> and uh, Belista <laughs> will order them a round of drinks with the coin that Noctis just gave her and immediately light a cigar. <laughs> uh... Kreb, like, looks over from the conversation and, like, tries to hurry through whatever interaction he's having with them. And, uh, like, the guy is, like, snapping at this person and, like, kind of, like, trying to keep his attention, like, and talking to him. He does hand them a folder, uh, and Kreb does hand them a pouch of coin, and Kreb returns to pour out uh, uh, another round for everyone. Kreb, Kreb received an envelope and gave a bag of gold. Yeah. You know what? Give it. Give mine to Noctis. Nope. He just starts sliding him like away. <laughs> he's, he's done now. <laughs> Abaddon's definitely following the shit out of these people. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Maddie will indulge as well. <laughs> I'll be sharp. Obliged. Thank you. We'll Thank in. you. All right, uh, and as they pour those drinks, uh, the, the the nobleman swiftly turns around, uh, kind of fixes his collar, and then heads straight out the door uh, his, with his guards directly behind him. What the hell was that about? Did anybody recognize that fellow? Would I? Would any of us who've been living here know of that? Who that man was? Uh, Krebs, you don't know. Uh, you don't know that guy. Uh, seeing Bayon maybe eager to get up and follow them, he kind of like will stop Bayon. Yeah. And uh, you don't know Gelin. That is Gelin Primwood. Do you not? He is one of the city council members. The richest man in Saltmarsh. I would appreciate it if you didn't try any funny business on him again, looking straight to Ballista. Now you, uh, you lot, you looking straight at Noctis, then to Bayon, you know better. Uh, we need to get paid around here, you see, and, you know, the richest man in Saltmarsh is going to make sure that that happens. So, let's make sure that he doesn't uh, trip over his heels again. Hey, hey, Captain. Uh, I've lived right. here my whole life, and I've heard stories, but never seen the man. That's what he looks like. 
arrogant prick. Prick. <laughs> Always wanted to get Kurt's away with like, it. Yeah. <laughs> he's, it was uh, I'm sorry, you went through that. Hey, hey, he's an arrogant prick, isn't he? Oh. Snap his fingers. Yes, well, when you've got that much coin, you can kind of do whatever you yeah. want, right? Ah. Disrespect the hardworking man. Doesn't matter. That's all right. And he pats the little uh, envelope <laughs> in his pocket. We got anything to do around here? Any new journeys or adventures you've heard of? No, no, and this guy right here, pointing to the really drunk dude, has not stopped talking since you guys left. Now, where were you? Firstly, he hasn't sent any others where he sent us. Yes? No, no. Good. Good. I'll, I'll look to my friends and start to... Uh, rehash kind of the whole tale of what happened up there uh, looking for them for help when he starts slurring on his words <laughs> no 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 not not sh not shake shack shake shaft oh, uh, you're right <laughs> <laughs> that's <was> good <laughs> Crab kind of like processes all of it smuggling operation out around the alchemists yeah, that's that's a good uh it's a good way to go about it. And, I mean, you know, we're always looking for new ports to ship out of. Um who has uh that code that we saw? Um Yeah, I pull it out of the bag of holding, smack it down, uh, and also make sure we mention the names like Sembele and uh the, it seems they had a lot of green on them. Don't know mm. if it means anything to anyone in the smugglers group, but uh, I'll try to give it a look with like thieves can shit. I don't know if it's really gonna work, but oh, nice, yeah. And uh, Crep rolls a crit as well, and uh, you uh, you study this with your knowledge of thieves can and code and stuff like that. This is definitely Morse code. It's definitely definitely Morse code. And uh, Kreb kind of thinks for a moment. Nope, never met the guy, but I've heard plenty of stories of green snake eyes. And that sounds like the sounds like the man you ran into. And uh, if if they're at all involved with the princess, he says very quietly under his breath, and that is. That is quite a problem for for us. Uh, Ellie's kind of uh, both a little upset and, and um, also a little uh, excited by he hearing the sea princes be um, mentioned. Have they have they been active? In salt marsh. Well, it'll. Uh, I don't say. If, I don't think I could say it's active like you see it every day, but it's just kind of something. It's a bad taste in your mouth. It never really seems to go away. I know that feeling. Well. If we're gonna get any business done around here, uh, looking to knock this in Bayon, I think we need to get the bottom to the bottom of whatever's going on with that abandoned house. If they're in cahoots uh, with the Sea Princes, then that's not all there is to that house. And they're likely to send more. I could do this. Like, uh, sobering up a little bit, but he's going to try to play with the necklace. And he said, oh, yeah, we found a book uh, called The Ye Secret of the Philosopher's Stone, and I'm pretty sure that's what this is. And he'll, like, take it off and put it on the table, and it'll just thump right back onto his chest. <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> Crab just shakes his head. 
Sorry, friend. Oh, it likes you. <laughs> so yes, it was what attached to you. <laughs> Pet. Well, in my years of smuggling, and like he's he's talking freely to you in this quiet conversation. There's not really anybody else in the bar aside from that drunk dude and the tiefling. He talks freely. My years of smuggling, they just. Looking at this and Bayon, you know it to be Morse code. When you've got a base operations from land and you're smuggling out to sea, you need some way to communicate with the ships that are waiting for you. Now, this looks like some kind of signaling code, uh, though I don't know what it means. A lantern? A lantern or... Some wizards at the magic cathedral that can create light artificially, whatever. Alright. Do you know Morse code? What does it say? Uh, it's, it's hard to make out, uh, but, uh, I've seen it before, and, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, this here, a, a lot of us will use it as, uh, means the first line is, is it safe? It's our way of checking if, uh, the drop-off and pick-up is safe. Uh, the second line, confirming that it is safe, everything is safe. And the third, uh, Ready to pick up, unload, come to the ship. What we're thinking is the smugglers are getting at some princesses. The princess, yeah. Princess, yeah. Uh, I've lived here long enough that I don't want anything bad to happen in this town. If they're trying to bring in bad stuff and do bad things here, we need to stop that. Is there any way of... Loot. Is there any... Loot <laughs> well, the sea princes, they don't always take things. Is there any way of knowing if um, there are human or otherwise cargo? Couldn't tell you. Only one way to find out. Yeah, well, did you find anything while you were down there? Well, we found a, an additional entrance that seemed to go further below the building. Maybe they have more things stored down there. Could be their seaport access, too. There was a very strange rumbling or something. Did, did anybody recall that? It was very terrifying. Am I misremembering? I, I don't recall. The skeletons? Yeah, they were... They were bad. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about. I don't recall. I'm trying to think as well. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> I could be misremembering. <laughs> so, like, wait, was that some other campaign? <laughs> I'm also stalling so I can scan my notes. <laughs> uh, we should uh, perhaps go back tomorrow morning and check that out. I assume it's getting kind of late. And I would like yes. To bed. Yeah. Uh, we do you should. Have room for us here tonight, Crab? No rooms at the empty night. Oh, right, I always forget. <laughs> Otherwise, it's prone to squatters, you, you know. Yeah. Hard enough to get him out get him out of here when the sun rises, so... Where would be the nearest inn? Well, if you can stand the clientele there, there's the Wicker Goat. They've got a few rooms, and the Snapping Line has got a few rooms as well. Well, if you're looking for a place to stay, 
I've got to be honest, I got an idea. You take care of whoever these people are. Capitalize on this abandoned home. And uh, you do a good job, and I'll put in a good word with Gillen, and you can work out some kind of property deal. Where does that one live? Well, it would be beyond me to disclose my employer's information like that now, wouldn't it? Always worth a try, isn't it? <laughs> Don't steal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just like reach over and pull on Bayon's tail a little bit. <laughs> but if you do, just... make sure you steal everything you can. I will. Hey, uh, hey Ballista, you want to come with us on this tomorrow? There might be some more coins to guards to be had. You know? Sure. Yeah, I, um, I'm interested in coin, and uh, I uh, would also work for a room if you wind up finding this place. For a room. Need some work for sure, but yeah. Well, it's that or sleep with the dead, so anything sounds like a bit of an upgrade to me. Oh. Right, just sleep with the dead. So bad. Have you ever slept with the dead, Bayon? Of course I have. He has not. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ellie, Ellie is very confused. <laughs> like, I'll tell you what. You sleep in the Gravenard tonight. I'll sleep okay. in your room, and then we'll see who fares better. All right, but you're paying for the room. Yeah, sure. Okay. Man, you're gonna lose this bet. No offense, my money. Is <laughs> my money's not believe this. So, so, yes. No, this is just chuckling. <laughs> I'm just not scared. All right. It's been plenty of night, plenty of nights on his own, and living out nowhere. I've had my fill of bones for one day. I will look for a room. <laughs> Uh, let's all room up somewhere. Uh, which one you guys want to go to? The the goat? Or the... What was the other one? Snapping turtle. Snapping turtle. <laughs> the snap, yeah, the snapping line. <laughs> the snapping line, okay. He's, he's trunk, he doesn't know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't yes. matter. Alright. Whatever's coin. closer. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Alright. Where are, you, where are you headed? Whichever one is closer. <laughs> <laughs> the closest one is the wicker goat, actually. Ah, the snapping goat. Good job. <laughs> hey, uh, a new, uh, a new, uh, <clears throat> Bayon, have fun sleeping outside. All right, bud. See you later. <laughs> Wait, don't worry about me. Give you guys way up that way. <laughs> All right. You shouldn't actually sleep in the graveyard. It was only a joke. I, I, I really don't think that you should do it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sleeping in the graveyard, Bayon? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so... Second player character death. <laughs> The four of you split off and head to the Wicker Coat. Um, Two story building has sleeping quarters for rent on the upper floor. Usually efficient, uh, sufficient to accommodate the slow stream of travelers making their way through small salt marsh. Um, a room will be five silver pieces. Inside, you find Lankus Currid, uh, the owner, a retired officer of the Kiowish army. Uh, who owns this. There are a few guards drinking up after a long shift. Uh, there is still the dwarven woman going over records, sitting on the table, and all is quiet. 
turning in for the night? Yes. All right, and he kind of like looks at the state of you, uh, all kind of in varying states of inebriation, and <laughs> just kind of frowns and uh, just slides you the keys. Don't make a mess now, and nods. I just make Maddie carry me up. <laughs> friend, let's go. <laughs> um, and Bale's, yeah. Bale's just gonna wait for the drunkard to the bar before he goes and sleeps <laughs> out in the woods. Nice. Okay, so you watch your friends head to the wicker coat. The rest of you all turn in for a night. It's a modest, comfortable room with a nice bed with nice animal furs on it. Um, there's a table with a mirror and uh, some general home furnishings. And uh, Bayon, you watch them walk in for a night's rest and turn back to watch the empty net. Uh, hours and hours go by and around like, it's around like 4.30 when, when that drunkard finally gets kicked out. Are you, just trying to, like, are you hiding see where he's trying going. to watch him? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, like, hide and see where he goes. Like, Okay, go ahead and give me a stealth check. Uh, did that work? Yeah, 26. <laughs> Not even going to roll. Um... <laughs> He stumbles out onto the muddy street and just kind of <laughs> lets out a burp and just kind of slowly stumbles away from the uh, the empty net and heads towards the uh, docks. He's going to head towards the docks. Okay, I'll follow him to the docks. Okay, yeah, the drunk man uh, just stumbles his way down towards the docks and um kind of so kind of walk down towards the docks and find a nice uh set of a nice heap of like burlap sacks that are filled with various goods uh there's a few barrels and he just kind of waddles over and just sits down on the sacks and lays down and just kind of watches the sea and very shortly and very drunkly he just passes out I'll wait for him to pass out, pick his pockets, and then I'll go, like, a little bit away from the docks and take, let's go to sleep. All right, give me a slight hand check. Is there also, like, is there a specific boat that he looked like he was choosing, or just random? No, nope, just seemed like he walked, I and mean, you can make an insight check, but... A uh, slight of hand was 22. I'll make an insight. That'd be good, but... 14? That's with max one. Okay. Yeah, it did not seem like he was walking towards any particular boat. It just seems like he was walking down to the docks and looking for a place to sleep. Uh, and you kind of dig through his pockets. You find six copper pieces. You find a fork. That's it. I'll just leave it on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> six copper pieces and a fork. As you're as you're finishing rambling his pockets, you hear a clatter and a bang. What is that? Try around. to hide before I try to hide before. I yeah, immediately leave. from the sound, you, uh, your cat like reflexes. Try to hide. Give me a stealth check. Okay, you. Uh, <clears throat> You panic and like I'm imagining a cat that is spooked by a sound <laughs> and just like scatters around looking for a place yeah, to yeah, hide. Yeah. You kind of bump into the drunken guy and one of the crates is gonna fall over into the water and the drunken guy just kind of <laughs> falls back asleep. Uh, you look back to the like clattering and stuff, like whatever had made noise. And you see in one of the warehouses behind you, a very large warehouse, there's just a hole in the in like one of the walls. And uh, in the hole, it's like dark 
into the warehouse, but in the hole there is a piece of wood that is like teetering as if uh, something had just like ran away. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm going after that. Okay. Uh, where? Where do you go? Oh, um, there's a hole, and then like, what is there? It's like a is it the beach, or like, what is it? That's you're on the docks right now. So yeah. you're on the docks, and then there's like a little bit of like a land bank, and then there's a big. Mm -hmm warehouse and then there's a hole kind of in the side like on the corner on the corner of the building like not on the main where the docks are but like on the side of it yeah i'll definitely jump down to like the beach line then assuming that's probably where if somebody left that's where they would have went okay you jump down to the beach line and you're now like under the boardwalk kind of you know like you're under the docks yeah and you yeah. do see a large creature running away under the docks oh shit God. Um. Make a perception check. Okay. Um. Undoubtedly, that is a troll 16. running away. From you. Troll. Yeah. Oh shit. Um. I mean, fuck it. I'm gonna take a couple shots at like its its legs. All right, go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, no. Don't worry about me, guys. It'll be all right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about you. <laughs> yep. Be all right. I'm fast. I can run. All right, give me, give me one second to set this up. Just needs to hit you once, that's all. <laughs> I'm not going to get close to it. I can be a hero, guys. <laughs> it's the most splattered furry hero. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't remember? No matter, no matter, no matter, no matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <Stop> back. <laughs> okay, I'm very sorry I don't have a map for you, but I do have this. It's okay. So... Distances, right? Yep. Distances will still work. Oh, shit. Okay, what was your initiative? Eight. Like, yeah, no, no. Four, uh oh, four, four, four. four. Control world eight now. All right. Um, <clears throat> you draw your bow, and the troll is currently running away from you. It will use its turn to continue running away from you. Okay. What do you do? Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. The map's like fucking up for some reason. Ledger. How far would you say? Measuring works. Uh, yeah. Ninety-five feet. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna shoot a couple crossbows or a crossbow's leg or a short bow, rather. Sorry. All right. Go ahead and give me an attack roll. Eighteen does hit. I would assume a sneak, right? Uh, no, because you're. Would have known I was there. He sees you. Yeah, he's running away from you. He knows you're there. So, uh, all right, seven damage. Anything else for you? Um, I will back up. As far as I can. All right, we might have to rotate this. Like 30 feet. All right, we are going to rotate this. I'll actually also, I will use my line agility. 
All right. Yeah. Wait, no, not yet. Okay, so now we are traveling up and down. Because I ran out of room. Up and down, okay. All good? Anything else for you? Yeah, I'm gonna move. Uh, did you move me or now? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna... <laughs> this is... My mouse is, like, inverted or something. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. We try to refresh or something? Yeah, let me try real quick. I mean, realistically, I just want to back up, like, 20 feet. I'd say, at this point, you're 90 feet away from him. Yeah, so I'd like to back up, too, yeah. After your movement. Uh, no, no, if I'm 90 feet away, fuck it. I'm gonna stand... Stay where I'm at, but like, how far up getting back to docks and shit am I? 30 feet. 30 feet to get back up to the docks? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Sound like right at the base of that. Okay. You troll. Having an arrow plant in his leg is going to turn around and roar at you and kind of like pound his fists into the into the sand and he's going to charge you and he's going to use his action to dash what are you doing i'm going to use my 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 uh feline agility feet okay or it's like a special i don't know yep i got you i'm gonna use that um going to fire another arrow at this thing. Okay, are you using your movement first? Uh... I think I'm gonna, like, try to, you know, like, shoot an arrow and then run. Okay. Is that Go okay? But I want to run, like, up the... back towards town. Okay. Go ahead and make cool? your attack. Nice crit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That'll hit. Uh, so it's a. Uh, uh, it's just nine. Okay, nice. nine damage. Very nice. All right. Now go ahead and use your feline's ab ab ability. Okay. So I. Uh, uh, there's town in this like little map. Thirty feet behind you. Three feet behind me, okay. So right here. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that and then I will go Um, this is like the like where I where I'd left off, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So then I'll go like back this way, back into town. Wait, like the the beginning of the docks type thing. Okay. Uh, so, what's your total movement right now that you're using? You're using 30 feet. Is, Are you bonus action that dashing? Been 60. That would have been 60 because the, the feline thing is going to be double, right? Yep. So, what's your baseline? Yeah. You're going to use your baseline movement, 30. Are you going to bonus action dash? Um, this thing is... You said it was like 20 feet... Okay, I'll so use you... bonus action. I use bonus action just to get like another fifteen feet back. Okay, so you've used your base movement, which is thirty feet, to get to the town. You now have thirty more feet from your feline's grace, and you want to use your bonus action to move fifteen more feet. So it would have been thirty to get to the docks, thirty to get into town, and then fifteen more. Okay, you're seventy-five feet away from this thing. Seventy-five. Um, yeah, thirty. Does he have to? Does he have to climb or no? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is really confusing. Hold on. <laughs> All right, you are running away, uh, thirty feet with your base movement to get up onto the docks, putting yeah. you. Uh, I guess you were, you were like you were like here when you first started attacking him. Somewhere right? around there somewhere around there yeah we were like 20 you feet were 25 you're 20 feet away from each other 
If you ran 30 feet, that puts you 50 feet away from this, this creature. Okay. You ran an right. additional 30 feet, that puts you 80 feet away from... Yeah, so you take off running after shooting an arrow, and is yeah, that your yeah. turn? Yes. All right, the troll... On each of your turns, you hit these guys with this with an arrow, and each time you see the arrow wound, you see the arrow pushed out, and the arrow wound will close as he regenerates the, from your uh, attacks. Um, he's gonna chase after you. He's gonna chase thirty feet, and he's gonna chase thirty feet up into town. And now there is a raging troll just exploding out of the docks and he's running towards you 30 feet uh, and he's 50 feet away from you. I'm just gonna like run screaming. <laughs> just try to get anybody and everybody in town Okay. To come after this thief. It is currently like 4 in the morning and uh, I can I'm... keep running. <laughs> Do you run are you choosing to run away from this creature? Yeah, yeah, I'm just like taking this dude on a fucking chase now. All right, you you turn back, running away, and you look back and you see a few of the guards have kind of appeared uh, from their sleepy kind of patrols, and they will uh, begin to kind of like you know section off this troll, and they're using spears and halberds and kind of like trying to push back this beast. And you see the troll kind of smash his fist down and kill one of the guards. He's gonna like kind of like swing over and kind of uh, smash one of the other guards, and it's just a scene. And you just run away from it, right? Yeah, I'll take one more shot and then I'm gonna run. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just running. I'm just yeah, running. At this, yeah, at this point, you're you're a little you're outside of your. Uh weapons usable range you can make yeah. a shot at disadvantage if you'd like oh no no i'm running all right you return to the graveyard yeah all right um you just leave behind you like echoes of chaos and uh <laughs> troll faction uh troll fighting the guards Insult Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely ruined many people's lives. <laughs> I got some target practice in. You return to <laughs> the graveyard and it's empty and quiet and uh, it's it's just you know a few hours before sun up and it's you know, everything is a little wet from uh, kind of like night morning dew uh, but you find a spot behind uh, a few graves and fall asleep there so one gets their long rest and the day is yours and not this will wake up and head down uh What is the crowd in the this place at this time of day? It's uh, there's not many. There are only a few guards. There's a handful of dwarven miners. Um, it's really not a lot of people in here. Really. Judging that the crowd isn't the obnoxious people of anything like that, I'll just sit down and get a get a coffee and some breakfast or something. Waiting for the rest of the group. Maddie will come down from his room, joining Noctis. I don't know where I'm like really excited. <laughs> like come running up to Noctis, be like, you won't believe what I just did. <laughs> uh, did you survive the graveyard? Did you hear anything last night? No, no, I don't okay. think so. Okay, good, good, good. good. Maddie's snoring, maybe I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. What we will find out. Do? Maybe we did nothing. What did you do? Maybe we'll find out. I don't know. It was fun oh, though. Lovely. Where, where's my cut? I can hit. I couldn't take it down. Take it down. Take it down. What? <laughs> I'll stay real quiet. Knock this. Killed two people.
people in front of me like nothing. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> that is not Noctis' reaction. Noctis is just like, oh shit. <laughs> but... Another coffee, please. <laughs> Make that two. Noctis is just open every time you leave him alone. Oh, he is so. Uh... How old are you, Bayon? It's like, you're still in like. Puberty, right? <laughs> hey. Yeah. I'm a teenager. It's like an adopted son I never asked for, but, you know, here we are. <laughs> Lankus will What's pour you all coffees. They are three copper pieces each. I was just kind of like clicking his nails together, like anxiously looking at the door, like waiting, hiding a little bit. Finding his like exit. Man, oh, did you entertaining morning, isn't it? Did, did you really sleep in the graveyard though? I heard you oh, go yeah, back that might up. have slept in the graveyard. Of course oh, I you're did. An idiot. You know, uh, not just go to the the other end, sleep there, tell you slept in the graveyard, you'd never know. <laughs> I'm here here now. Does he smell like the graveyard? Yeah, yeah, he does. I know the silver piece. I don't want it. She'll take the silver piece back and then put it towards the bartender <laughs> and ask for a coffee and any raw meat they have. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's get some from the butcher down in the market. Uh, what are you looking for? Uh, just shine a light on something and then send it my way. You get me a fish. Sure. A fish? Sure. Yep, yeah, fish. Breakfast for everybody? That's what you're looking for? Yeah, Two yeah, servers. Uh, preferably cooked. Preferably <laughs> not fish. Sure. sure. This one will this one will pay for me. <laughs> yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not you, not this. The new one. Me? The one that dared, dared me that I can't sleep in oh. the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, I'm young, but... How much for <laughs> to draw a bath for this one? <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to be in a bath, please. Include oh. it in your price of the room. It's, if you didn't get one don't last night, it. you can. Don't want it. Please. I don't want it. Oh, you didn't stay here last night. No, 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 no baths for you. <laughs> Five silvers. I don't want it. And he turns back and just kind of chuckles and heads to the kitchen and prepares you all uh, a very simple uh, breakfast of some eggs, some uh, some cured ham, and a bit of uh, a lot of potatoes. He's using a lot of potatoes to fill the plate, but uh, will serve all of you your your requested items, uh, including a like parchment wrapped new uh, butcher piece of meat for Ballista. Dylan's gonna kind of look over to Ballista and just like wait for her to eat. Is she really going to do? She's clean? just gonna take like a like her pocket knife and cut pieces of raw meat and eat it with black coffee. Nice. Dylan's like starting to like her. She's like, okay. <laughs> All right. And he like just chomps the head off of this fish. <laughs> Ellie is trying so hard to. <laughs> <laughs> I was really just not sure of this new friend, and he's just trying to size size them up because they seem older and wiser. Ali, uh, what have what have what have you been up to? I missed you. I'm Ellie. No, no, Bali, Bali. Oh, okay. I thought you said Ali. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ballista, ballista. It's less if you have to shorten it. Never Bali. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, uh, things are, since, uh, the same as the last you saw them, I, uh, I put the boxes in, I take the boxes out, I hang out with some dead people. Yeah, we're dead people. Yeah, I, uh, I work in the graveyard, and, uh, typically, like, sometimes you I- You plague a prank! 
No, I, I mean, like, I work with the Resurrectionists and occasionally your friend here, and... So wrong with me sleeping in a graveyard, then? Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you had a good experience. Uh, and she'll just kind of, like, tip her hat and she'll light a cigarette and, like, have some more coffee. Bayon's so confused. Alright. Breakfast now done. What, what do you, where to? What are you guys doing? We stay away from the docks today, okay? Why? Don't worry, don't worry. You just... It's not good. They feel like a feeling. You know, little cat instinct. Matty would like to check out the local leather maker. Local leather maker? Okay. Yes. He wants to look for a harness for Skippy. Okay. What's everybody else doing? Um. Wandering I about. Ellie will spend some time uh, trying to copy some uh, a spell from one of the spell books that she found, or we found. No problem. Yeah, Bam, Noctis just kind of is just going to keep. Sorry, Noctis, go ahead. I'm just going to keep working on the the card that was dedicated to Ollie. Okay. I'm going to finish it. Callista. Um, she's not really sure, like, what she's doing with, um, with this group yet, so I'll probably just tail with Noctis, um, and she'll, like, she'll buy him a couple drinks and hope that he doesn't notice that she's doing that, and, like, just keep ordering drinks until he, like, she's not good at talking, she's, I have, like, absolutely no charisma, but she'll just keep buying drinks and hope that he starts, like, telling her about what is going on. Yeah, and over time it's not too hard, uh, especially because he just admires you and your weirdness uh, and gets you caught up on kind of what he was doing before, but also kind of the past 48 to you know, however long, however many hours, 72 hours it's been. And, uh, you know, tell you all about the house and like, you know, it might be nice to have a place to really call home. It needs some work, but... It's been a long time since I've had a place that was mine, or ours, but there's also a carnival in town, and I really want to see that. Ellie, I think, may have told you she's with it. I should probably check in with them, actually. <laughs> I mean, the house could always wait till tomorrow. I've had a couple drinks, you guys, just we're good. Carnival? <laughs> Alright, as you exit the Wicker Goat, uh, it seems like you're kind of just hanging around for now, and the only person with really somewhere in mind to go is Matty. So you just follow Matty, maybe, to the, um, the Tanners. And the leather worker here is known as Kiorna Kester, and Kester's Leather Goods. Uh, Kester's she... Leather Goods. Produces smooth, colorful leather for every purpose and sells both of the cure hides and items she fashions from it. Uh, you find a very humble wooden built shop um, and it smells very rich in here, like like leather. I don't know how to explain it, but it smells very good and there like there you know, a lot of the stains and stuff that she uses. Um, it doesn't smell like you know like lavender or anything but it's, it's just it's a very pleasant smell and uh she you know greets you warmly good morning what can i do for you good morning to yourself well i've come to find myself uh i need to i'm looking for should i say some type of harness or light protection for my hound friend here and then she like closes her book really quickly and like and like leans over. <gasps> that was a very good boy. Come on, come on over here, good boy. And like Skippy like happily kind of clambers over <laughs> and she just kind of like rubs his face and just kind of like wiggles him around. He's a very good boy. This is 
Well, and she will uh, take out her tape measure and begin to kind of measure. And she looks very excited to do something like this for you. Uh, as you're looking around the shop, you notice there are very, very exotic and strange looking like leathers and furs that you may not recognize. You can make a nature check if you'd like to try to recognize some of them. Uh, yes, I think I can make something like this. And uh, he's a big boy. It'll take a little bit of leather and uh, 20 gold or so. Matty, Matty will pull out his coin pouch and count what he has. Mm. Yeah, let's... Can, can, we, can we work with the 18? Make, Since that's all I have on me right now. Make a persuasion roll. Uh, then I got a 20 on that nature check. No. And then... Oh. Uh, sorry, it's... Uh... This is gonna be a you know a rough, nice piece of leather. It'll be twenty gold. If... Kind of looking to your friends, but uh, looking around, you see some of them. There's like a lion hide. There's an alligator hide on the wall, and then you're looking at one, and it looks very strange. It doesn't look like it's any kind of creature that you've ever seen before, actually, and. Um, you don't know what it is, even with the 20, you just know that it is, like, this strange material. Uh, it looks like it is, like, amphibious in, uh, its kind of sheen that she kind of keeps it oiled up. Um, but yeah, there's some fins on it, and... Maddie will, uh, will kind of turn around. Does this, this, what do you have, um, two pieces of gold? I will pay you back on our next pay. Gives it to you right away, no problem. <laughs> oh, oh th thank you. And he'll turn back just like looks. All right, I'll I'll give you that twenty. And uh, do you mind me asking what what is that on the wall there? Pointing to that mysterious piece. She looks up at it and ah uh, yes, uh, strange, strange creature. I've never, never seen it before. I was out for a. Uh, I ride, I float on my rowing boat, and I was doing a bit of fishing, and in my net I catch this humanoid fish creature, and terrifying, absolutely terrifying to look like I could not bear to fashion anything from the head and left it to sink to the bottom of the sea. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's hide remains there if you'd like to purchase it for something. Well, I, I just gave you a coin I have for my dog, but what does something like that run? Oh, 35 for the hide. It's not too bad. Okay. This price includes in for me to fashion it into whatever you want. Oh, nice, nice. Well, I'll keep that in the back of my mind for when I come across more coin, but, uh... Is there a time you need me to, to stop by later to pick this up for a young boy Skippy here? Uh, it'll just take me a few hours. No time limit. Alright, I'll uh, swing back through later then. And he's a very good boy. She gives him a couple <laughs> other scritches and pats and uh, one, one more thing. Uh, hold on. And she will kind of like yes. dig through a box and retrieve a very large bone. Uh, unsure of like where it came from, but she just throws it to Skippy. And, uh, by the way, you are the adventuring sorts, right? You all taking oh, time. Yes, of all of us do. Yes. Yeah. I am very aware that, uh, adventurers sometimes come across strange and, uh, exotic creatures. Should you come across any kind of these exotic creatures and return the hide to me, I will pay for, pay them. I will pay for them. A very fair oh. price. And she Anything will... in particular that you're looking, or just exotic in general? She will pay you uh, a fee in gold pieces equal to 100 times the creature's challenge rating, up uh, to a challenge rating above 3 or higher. Nice. Okay. With a successful cool. sleight of hand or survival check. Just the monster. It'd be really, really interesting to, like find a troll in the neighborhood and bring it down and skin it <laughs> troll oh yes i've made many things of troll hide a nice blue cape once i made ah interesting well 
I will definitely keep an eye out and try to help you in the manner that I can. It only helps you if I can pay you for them, so sounds great. And she'll helps get to right to work. You, so. I think she'll get right to work Appreciate on the, the master parts. He'll uh, nod his head, give her another thank you, and walk out the door. All right. So, back out onto the streets of Salt Marsh, and we will take a little quick bio break right here, if that's all right with everyone. Just take a little quick bio break and continue kind of poking around the town of Salt Marsh. So, we'll be right back, friends. Cool. Right.
All right. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. We return to us of Salt Marsh, where our adventuring party is enjoying a little bit of downtime and uh, poking around the town of Salt Marsh. We last left you at Kester's Le Leather Goods. What are you doing? Well, should we head back to the house, finish clearing it out, or Ellie, did you want to stop by the carnival? I mean, I wouldn't be ashamed to play some games if that's... I should let Luca know uh, that I will be away for some time. Anybody else? Anybody else have anything they need to do? Yeah, all they have to do is come back, come back here and, I don't know, a couple hours to pick up that leather for Skippy, but other than that, free to go. Uh, we should purchase some potions or and what have yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. There is the a... apothecary is that way. <laughs> <laughs> there is a there's like an open market where you could easily find uh, a stall with an apothecary that has general potions, antidotes, poisons, uh, anything in a vial basically that you can find. This person has. Um, <clears throat> And it is on the way uh, towards the carnival. Um, you find a humble uh, dwarf man sitting high on a high bar stool chair, just kind of smoking a pipe next to his potions. Hey, good morning. What can I get? Potions? You want uh, the potions? Absolutely, yes. What do you have? Mm, there's uh, potions, there's a greater healing potion, there's just regular potion, there's an antidote, there's poison, regular poison, there's an alchemist spire. Oh, let me pull up my uh, potion shop, actually. Take one of the regular healing. All right, that'll go 50 gold for you. 50? 50 gold. I don't got it. I trade you uh, this golden bone, handcrafted by one of the world's finest alchemists. It should definitely encourage you to make even stronger potions, potion seller. The <laughs> finest potions in all the land. Finest potions, you say? Well, friend, by the looks of you, you couldn't handle me finest potions. But <laughs> let me see that bone there. Uh, potion seller, <laughs> I said only your finest potion. He uh, is taken aback for a moment. He sits back in his chair and glares at you. you cannot handle your finest potions. <laughs> 50 gold pieces for a standard healing potion. Uh, and uh, make a deception check. Yep. With a plus seven is only a thirteen. Somebody make a distraction. Uh <laughs> however, he looks at it and he's like Is it bones? Is it bones? Hmm. Interesting indeed. Uh, for sure, friend. Got any more of these? I can get you a lot more. Uh <laughs> So, what is it? A one for one just for a minor healing potion? That seems like a fair trade, yes? I'll give you three to start. Three healing potions for this bone. No, you got the two. You got any more of these bones here? Oh, one for one until you get to three. I have one. Well, I got one myself here. Alright. Three bones, three potions. I'll take them. I'll throw in a... a uh one of the gold skeleton bones okay for a potion of healing possibly he'll he'll sell you he'll trade you three bones for three potions uh after that you'll have to buy them for 50 gold so you guys can decide who get who gets to trade their bone for a potion up to 50 gold. however he's got acid he's got alchemist fire antitoxin he's got a component pouch he's got a flask he's got a healer's kit He's got ink, a jug, a flask of oil, he's got perfume, he's got 
standard potion of healing. He's got alchemist supplies, brewer's supplies, cooking utensils, herbalism kits, poisoner's kits. How much for the healer's kit? The healer's kit will cost you five gold pieces. I'll take one of those. Anybody else? You said he's a potion of greater healing, right? Yep. I will offer him five gold gilded bones and a vial of my blood for the greater he healing potion. I'll take one out of the bandolier and slide it towards him and I'll say, I think you'll find this very interesting. Yeah, uh, as a apothecary, uh, kind of alchemist potion seller, he looks at it and immediately knows what it is. Give me a persuasion roll at advantage. Sorry, one second. You guys hear those fireworks going off there? Yeah, I hear him here, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's the carnival. Last night, too. It's ah, yes, carnival. yes, it's the yes. carnival. <laughs> You're offering them five gold bones. And... So 25 gold pieces total in value plus a vial of my blood. Okay. Um... We're just watching you like stab your hand and just drip it into a vial and, and be like the... blood for money. <laughs> she has she has a bandolier that has like green vials in it and she's slid one of those vials over. Gotcha. Uh usually a hundred gold for a greater healing potion. Uh, you got twenty more gold. I put twenty gold on the table. Uh, it's a deal. Gives me the greater healing. Uh, and with the three healing potions we got, uh, why don't you three take them? I have healing spells, so just whoever, whoever's left and doesn't have healing potions. It's Maddie, Ellie, and Bayon each had one. Thank you. Just a that way I don't have to babysit you guys again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, just a regular potion of healing for us. All right, so to the carnival. To the carnival. To the carnival. All right. You head up the hill, turning back from the market, and make your way to the carnival. Once we get to the carnival, I'm gonna like knock this aside for a second. Wait, okay. make sure everybody else passes and. I took on his jacket a little. What? What's going on? Oh. Yeah, last night, I flipped out and tried to, you know, just demolish you. What did you do? I followed the drunk at home. Oh, that's why he sleeps. Well, that would be fun, you know? Let's go see where this guy comes from. He slept on the dock, so... Thing there. I tried to rob him. Nothing. Yeah, you had to know his pockets would be empty. No, oh, you never know. He took our gold money, so maybe he made more to whatever. And all I heard a big crash. So I looked over, and it's like a, a meal type of thing. The docks, I don't know if you remember, but there's a giant hole that came through. Well, I saw a troll. A troll? A troll. Quiet now. It's all the trolls, so I... I don't know what got into me, but I, I chased after it. I shot Damn. it twice. I shot That's... it twice, Noctis. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> and he like, just like starts grabbing and shaking, man. Like, ah! <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I'm fast. I got out of there. He killed two guards. Do you not feel bad for them? Of That's course two I do. guards. They might have had a family. Of course I do. Why do you think I... If it gets out, you have to help, you have to help me. Yeah, we could maybe find it one day, but I've only heard tales of those, and 
Oh, no, no, like I anything mean, I want to fight. I mean, if somebody has seen me. Oh, don't worry. I'll okay. convince them. They saw nothing. All right. So, I do feel bad about the gods, so. Yes, you should. You should also just sleep in a inn. Why did you do this whole thing? I don't understand any of this. <laughs> well, your, new, your new friend, I don't know. Your new friend made me feel jealous. We use our heads first, Bayon. We use our heads first. Be tricky. Yes, you're right. Oh. A bit of target practice either way. He just slaps him in the back of the head lightly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get some games. Alright. Continue on, I guess. <laughs> Ellie's gonna look for uh, Luca, uh, who is a blue-skinned tiefling with a uh, big bushy white beard. Uh, he he is the ringleader. He runs the uh, the carnival, um, and uh, basically uh, let him know that uh, I I won't be performing in the the next couple of days. Yes, before you stands the carnival. There are many children running about and families having fun. Uh, you're, you're kind of looking around and you see a, a young child kind of accidentally let go of a balloon, actually. Uh, it's this strange kind of shiny uh, material uh, that floats on a string. And uh, you see the, ch the child kind of lets go of it and it kind of floats up and it cries a little bit. But one of the uh, performers kind of sees the, the crying child and kind of does a little pose, no need to worry, friend, and he kind of does a little bit of juggling, and the child is instantly, uh, uh <clears throat> forgets about it. Uh, you're looking around for Luca, and you see Luca on the stage back here, and, uh, before you stands the fair, there is an archery contest, there is a large collection of tents in the center selling food, there's, like, just like intoxicating smells coming from these tents of all this food that they're cooking uh there is a kind of like reddish purplish tent that looks very mystical uh it's a fortune teller tent there's a game called high striker there are exotic animals in cages there is a big tent called bumper elephants and at the top at the very end of the carnival is the hungry hungry hydra Um, is the balloon t gone? Uh, am I able to quickly cast a mage hand and see if I can grab it? It is. Uh, let's see. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say it's 20 feet up in the air. You have 30 feet, right? Yeah, that's within range. Yeah. Just as it begins to float away, 20 feet up in the air, you use your mage hand and Pluck the string to find the balloon. I'll uh, bring it back down to the, the child who was crying. See, see? Uh, it's not his, so bad. Wipes his tears. <laughs> yeah! And grabs the <laughs> balloon and uh, like looks up to his looks up to like his parents. <laughs> no! He's very excited. He's very <laughs> So Carnival is yours, friends. I'll turn back to the party and say, please enjoy yourselves. Uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, I'll turn a blind eye to any other activities that you plan on doing, but... <laughs> Nox just lights up like a little kid and immediately goes to the exotic animals. <laughs> I actually was, yeah. I'm the same, actually. Mm. I see what's the... going on there. Go ahead. It's the archery contest bow and arrow only, or? You can surely go up and find out. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stay with the team and just go to the ex exotic animals, but I would like to check out the archery competition. Okay. Uh, you head towards the cages of exotic animals, and uh, sitting on a stump in the center of the cages... Uh, just reading a book with uh, their leg crossed over one is a humanoid figure in all black clothing and they are wearing this white mask and the white mask only has these little slits for eyes and a happy face 
and they look up and they say, Hello, welcome. Okay. <laughs> Behind the happy mask salesmen uh, are an array of animals uh, ranging from eagles and bloodhawks. There are baboons, jackals, there's a giant rat there uh, in a kind of a little tub of water is a little octopus. There's a smoky creature and smoke is kind of like pouring out of uh, its cage as a smoke method. Um, there's a pony, there are uh, some deer kind of grazing on there. There's lots and lots of animals. Let me send you actually a picture. Sounds very interested in the octopus. Blarp, is that you? Yeah. Oh, Blarp. 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 <laughs> ding, ding. Blarp. Sedge. Blarp, is that you? I'd be scared if I was Blarp. <laughs> yeah, you should be scared. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'd be. I don't think he'd be trapped in a car. Those are the animals that <laughs> That's are. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, he's not getting caught in a carnival. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Those, yeah, those are them. Yeah. There's also a chicken. There's also a strange, strange-looking chicken sitting there. There is a flying snake. Um, there's like a bat creature that is a sturge that you saw in the attic of the abandoned house. Um, yeah. I'm definitely checking out the bat. Yeah, just a, uh, a, a sturge, actually. Just a little sturge. Oh, so cool. Look at the flying snake. I know, flying snake. Weird, okay. weird creature. Good now. I'm going to try to feed the bat a ration. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, give me an, give me an animal handling check. It's blue. All right. Yeah, you try to feed it a little bit of ration, and it begins to sweet, and it just batters its wings against the cage, and the happy mask salesman turns. Excuse me, if you could, please. No, touching the animals until you buy. You can buy them. How Wait, I can, I can buy this bat? Of course, of course. Yeah, how much, how much do you want for this bat? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, it'll be 20 gold pieces. 20 gold pieces for a bat? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The rare ones are 40 gold pieces. 40 gold pieces. Third is 40. Uh, no, it's okay. I seem to have this effect on animals, and she'll just, like, walk awkwardly away. <laughs> Noctis is gonna pace around, like, looking for something particular that reminds him, and then he finds the blink dog. Yes, there is indeed a blink dog there. Uh, excuse me, uh, sir. How did you manage to cage this one? You see the happy mask go to a, like, straight just like straight face the mouth is just totally flat the eyes are just totally straight they're just a straight face and he just magically of course and it returns to a happy face <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they can lean down and whisper to the dog like you little shits used to drive me nuts how much for him uh shit sorry uh much is the bet Seventy-five gold pieces for the blink dog. You're lucky I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be here for a few days if you change your mind. Anybody else? But the happy mask salesman. All right, where to? Yeah, some of you want to go shoot your toys and make the spiky things in the targets, that's right. <laughs> Listen, if you have anything else that we can shoot at, I'm 
I am uh, down to go do that. All right, there is indeed an archery contest. You approach the archery contest to find Drow. Uh, he looks like a young, a young elf, uh, or elves age, of course. And he just kind of sits there with his arms folded, hair just like down in front of his face. Oh, so. Yeah, this is the archery contest. You would want to try or something. Most emo drow ever. <laughs> I'd love to try this. Yeah, well, whatever. It's like five gold pieces for six arrows. So oh, just gosh, like shoot. Pieces. Uh, you know, there's art. There's, oh, there's targets. What do there. I get? Oh, um, yeah. So first prize, 25, 30 points. You get 10 gold pieces back. You'll bring money. Um, 30 to 60 points. Tangle pieces, I'll give you a hearty meal ticket. Uh, third prize is ten gold pieces, and you can like pick out an item or something, whatever. I don't know. It's the guy who's over there, he's got a bunch of items. You take his ticket over there and just like, get an item or something. Wait, Let's do what, it. what was first? First is just you double your money, ten gold pieces back. But third is ten gold pieces. And an item. So, first prize is 10 gold, or like, third prize, I guess, is 10 gold. Second prize is 10 gold, a hearty meal ticket. First best prize is 10 gold and an item. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, so, like, the target's, like, the closest one. That's, like, worth, like, five points. And the second one's, like, 10. The third one's, like, 15. So, whatever. It's, like, shoot them, I guess. Do I need a bow do to do this, or...? Yeah, I mean, we got one here if you need it, and he, like, looks over, and there's, like, this really shitty, like, like piece of wood, basically, that's bent uh, with a, a string. You need... You want it? You want this one? What's your name again? Uh, uh well, it's Zero. No, no. no. Zero. Zero. No, nice to meet you, Zero. I'm in... I'm in... Uh... Oh. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, is your name? <laughs> I think he's talking to you, Blister. Oh, sorry, what What did he say? You, you don't like me very much, do you? <laughs> I, I didn't say that at all. Uh, and no, she'll just I... pull the Grimwalker, like, and ask him if she can use her crossbow for the competition. The drow lights up, uh, and, like, kind of, like, Opens his eyes and then like the sun hits him. He's like, oh, oh, that's a nice, that's a very fine weapon. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, no problem. The bear kind of like sheepishly at this point, like puts his bow back. Like maybe I'll just. No, we should do it together. Come on. <laughs> oh, I was going to offer you this, but look what you have. It's just nicer. I think we should both join and see yes. if we can oh, double yeah. our money. I was already going to go. Let's do it. All right. Yes, Five gold pieces. Step right up. All right. You can pay five gold pieces and go ahead and you get six arrows. Uh, go ahead and make your six attacks. Uh, wait, sorry. Let's do this one person at a time and make your uh, six attacks and tell me which target you're looking for. So I know how many points you get. Um, so is it one, two, three, like closest to furthest? Yep. I'm gonna go for three the whole time for this one. Three the whole time. Twenty-four hits. You don't have to roll damage. Roll your next attack. Or you can roll six in a row if you want to. 16 will miss. That was six, yeah. Right. One, two, three. All right. Out of your shots, two of them hit. And you you get 30 points. And he's like, all right. Yeah, good job, man. You hit two of them. Awesome. Hands you 10 gold pieces. Nice. Take it all day. 
<laughs> All right. I'm gonna do three. The first three on two, okay. and the second three on the last one. All right. That's a crit. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah. It> explodes. <laughs> <laughs> to get double your points. Yeesh. Okay. Uh, so now the next three on th the third one, which I'm sure won't be this good because there's no way this rolling <laughs> happens. Hey, you, gotta try you gotta believe in yourself first. Very nice. <laughs> so Jesus. you get 20, 30, 40, uh, math 55, and 70. You got 70 points. <laughs> and he's like, Damn. yeah, that is, that is a nice bow. That is very, very nice crossbow you've got there. Yeah, you you win. Yeah, here you go. And uh, he's going to hand you 10 gold pieces, and he's going to hand you like a silver ticket. Very fine silver ticket. And just go over there, just go ahead, and there's a, a green tent right here. And you can return your, like, tickets there. And yeah, good job. Whatever. Oh, I see why you know not yeah. this. Makes sense. Um, she'll give five gold pieces back to Bayon uh, for doing the competition together, and then she'll head towards the tent with him. No, you... No, it's okay. I won too. Oh yeah, you did one too. Never mind. Yeah. Alright, uh it's kinda weird, but uh Ballista, can you do forward slash roll space thirty-four? You roll a D thirty-four for me. <laughs> you said forward slash roll space what? Thirty-four. The number three four. In roll twenty chat. Uh. 1d34, right? Yeah, 1d34. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 27. Okay. Roll a 34. Natural 34. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Got him. Okay. You pull out of the magic box a pipe. Very fine pipe. Pull out of the box a pipe of remembrance. Excellent. Remembrance. <laughs> All right. What's everybody else doing? Is that something that I should be able to add to my inventory, or should I just make a note of it for now? You can add it. You should be able to add it. Pipe of remembrance. I'm... Okay, I I'll just deal with this offline, but I'm only seeing the pipes of haunting and pipe of the sewers. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can add it for you then. What is the pipe of the sewers? <laughs> Basically makes some uh, really gross smell or something like that. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Okay. Uh, I will... Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Uh, I will wait. You said Luca is currently on stage. Yes, Luca is currently on stage, uh, just kind of like giving a spiel about the things. Like, come on and test your test your aim at the archery contest to make sure you fill your bellies at uh, the tents over there. Stop by and see the happy map. You know, he's just kind of telling people as they walk by this kind of information. I'll I'll wait for him uh, behind stage. Okay. Alright. Where's everybody going? Following the group. Noctis, you heading for the fortune teller? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> See if anyone else wanna do anything for you. Hey, leave the way. All right. Okay. You head towards the fortune teller. The fortune teller tent is closed it's purple it's like this very fine purple and red uh tent fabric head inside yeah head inside 
And of course, the inside of this tent is much, much larger than the outside of this tent. However, it is very empty on the inside of this tent. There is only a streak of light that comes from the top of the tent opening down into this crystal almost case. And in this crystal case, you can see what looks to be a man. You step forward a little bit closer and see that the case is kind of adorned in all of these like dwarven kind of gears, like uh, some of like the really, really fancy dwarven clockwork that is like very rare sought after uh, craftsmanship. And the like the glazing, uh, it's not glass, but it's like this very shiny crystal. Inside of it is not a man, but instead this construct of a man. Uh, this like large robotic figure uh, and the figure um, kind of animates as you approach it and its eyes light up and uh, it begins to and there's a little coin slot on the front of the machine uh, can I tell what kind of how much it needs to be put in it says one silver, please. Oh yeah, I'm putting in a silver. Uh, you put the coin in, like, and the animation had stopped, and you put the coin in, and it begins to animate again. And it stops, and then the mouth uh, begins to kind of, like, light up as it talks. Um, roll me a d6. Uh, greed is a poor man's compass. I see gold and riches in your future. And out of like a little compartment, uh, like flap, like a vending machine almost, uh, begins to pour uh, uh, 500 copper pieces. So five gold worth of copper pieces. Yeah. <laughs> he scoops it up very excitedly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit's awesome. You guys gotta try this. <laughs> I mean, I'll definitely buy the silver piece in there. All right. Go ahead and roll me a d6. Two. Four. All right. <laughs> the weapon that you hold, it will be the straw that breaks the cow's back. And out pops a dagger. Oh, nice. I always use those. Interesting. Robot just gives out golden weapons, hmm? Interesting. <laughs> oh, wild. And one silver and five gold, I could sit here all night. This machine's full of money. <laughs> uh, yeah, Anybody else? Bump of elephants. I got two pieces of copper, mate. I'm just here to hang out. <laughs> um, uh, I guess uh, Ellie will will spring for some. Uh, like while she's waiting for Luca, um, she'll also put a silver in. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a d5. If you can write that into that. <laughs> I also got a four. Okay. All right. Uh, the the robotic man animates. <laughs> When opposed by the worms, silver will not be will not mean second best. And eighteen silver pieces fall out of the compactor. Nice. Oh. I'll just like pat it. <laughs> Good old faithful. And did you see it actually react? It takes off its hat and puts it back on. <laughs> You you work here, right? Ah uh, yes, occasionally. 
Can he come with us? Uh, <laughs> I I don't think so. Sadly. Oh. Very useful. <laughs> Did somebody say bumper elephants? Yes, That's was, my favorite. I was wondering about the bumper elephants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds fun. Heading for a bumper I mean, elephants. Elephant. You head in for bumper elephants? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> Once more, the inside <laughs> of this tent is much, much larger than the outside of this tent. Um, <clears throat> inside, you Check. find large circus tent and the floor is just covered in empty peanut shells and bits of straw and uh it's standing in the corners are these large large elephants there is a gnome standing atop this box right here it says welcome welcome friends welcome to bumper elephants for today only, try your luck. See who will be the best. Take home your bragging rights and one item for free. Sounds great. All right. To your places, to your places. Everyone get to an elephant. <laughs> All right. So everyone gets your elephant. Uh, and for the purposes of the tokens, you, you should be able to move those elephants. Yeah, and you guys kind of just get your tokens off to the side. Yeah, for me, please. Thank you. So, Bumper Elephants, he, is, he taps his wand on the side of the stage. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, hold on one sec. Try to knock off your opponents off of their mounts. On uh, when, it's, when it's your turn, I will call out your turn. You can charge your elephant or lasso an opponent. If you get, if you get charged... You'll have to be quite dexterous. You'll make a DC save uh, if you get hit. Uh, the further you go with that elephant, the harder it will hit, and the harder it will be for the person to stay onto the elephant. Uh, if you're close enough, you can use your lasso and try to pull somebody off of their elephant. Uh, that would be a sleight of hand check contested by their acrobatics check. Um, yeah. So, without further ado, roll initiative. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds great. Right. Oh, nice. Who's getting screwed first? Lista. <laughs> I'm in for you. Elephant I'm, Battle Royale. I'm the Nightwalker, Grimwalker. Scream, man. <laughs> uh, who's got a higher dex, Noctis or Ballista? I imagine it's gotta be you. Uh, I don't know, uh, actually. Mine is 17, my base score. Same. Uh, mine is 15. Alright. Yep, yeah, so that's good. Alright. Alright! Chaos! <laughs> and he <laughs> shoots some fireworks into the air with his wand. And first to act, Bayon. Go ahead. Um, so, the way this works is uh, if you get charged, the DC is 5 plus uh, every 5 feet that the elephant goes before hitting another creature adds plus 1 to the DC. You have disadvantage on the roll if somebody hits you directly head on. Um, yeah. Alright. Yes, I'm going for it. I'm going for Ballista. Okay. What do I do? Well, just, just run at her? Yeah, just... just uh, run at her. Yeah, I got you. Just, no, oh, thank you. Nice. So it's 30... You moved 30 feet. That's 6 blocks. So it'll be a DC 11. And what do I roll? Uh, Dexterity saving throw. Or, or strength saving throw. Your choice. Oh man! All right, you hold, you hold, hold strong onto your elephant, uh, and you are not knocked off. Okay, Ellie. All right, uh, I'm going for Bayon. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you got you got uh, forty feet with the elephant. Sorry. Okay. 
<laughs> see. Oh, he's too far away. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, it would be good. Yeah. Three feet about from there, its head. Yeah. Oh, from that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, from from that. Its, yeah, you okay, would just yeah. have enough. <laughs> I'm just charged! <laughs> Ellie's right. way too excited. So 40, <laughs> that's 8. I okay, know. so... Bayon, give me a dexterity or strength saving throw. DC math 13. DC 13. Ooh. Ooh. Bayon. Bad roll. Bad roll. Bayon falls off of his elephant. And it's the first out. Guys. All right. Ballista. Try. Good try. Yeah. What's what's the like <laughs> range on the elephant? 40 feet. 40 feet. And what's the like disengage option? Like, what's the deal with? That? There's no, there's no opportunity attack. So, feel free to run uh, wherever you need to go. But you can whip somebody, right? <laughs> what I was trying to do. You do also. You do. Ha you have to have a minimum of one block between you and the person you're trying to hit. So you do have to like <laughs> back off and try to hit them if they're right in front of you. Okay, I'm gonna back up twenty feet. That also make me uh, hit Ellie face on, right? Yeah, you could back up 20 feet and then hit <laughs> Ellie head on 20 feet. <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right, so that's four slots. So that's a DC nine and a dexterity or strength saving throw at disadvantage for being head on. Okay. Uh, and that's... Uh, is that Oh wait, acrobatics is for the lasso to avoid the lasso. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Okay. Wait, what's with the lasso again? If you're within 15 feet of another one, you can make a sleight of hand check, contested by their acrobatics check to pull them off of the elephant. <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I was gonna do originally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Go ahead. Dex save. Disadvantage. Dex. Dex. <laughs> What'd you get? Uh, well, that, that'd be one. <laughs> oh no! And Nelly, or Ellie, is knocked clean off of the elephant. Okay, that's forty feet from Ballista. Knocked it. You move. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Apply one bunk directly into the head of this elephant. Go ahead and give me a dexterity or strength saving throw at disadvantage DC okay. 13. Yes. Move eight space there. I feel like having a low initiative in this is the way to go, man. He's just going to tee it up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, oh nice. Oh. Back. Nice. <laughs> He just okay. charges at uh, at her, and he's just like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." <laughs> okay, so I'm so I'm so sorry to ask this a second time, but what are the lasso rules again? Within 15 feet, you make a sleight of hand check. They make an acrobatics check. I'm gonna lasso his ass. <laughs> On your turn, sorry. Matthew. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. It's okay. So, Matthew. can you move within 15 feet and then try to lasso somebody? Yeah, absolutely. I forgot Maddie was even here. <laughs> That's how he wins. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna move to right here. Yeah. Uh, which is 30 feet, which is 15 feet away from him, and then I'm gonna lasso Noctis. <laughs> All right. <laughs> pull give me a sleight of hand with. Give me a sleight of hand, Maddie, and Noctis make an acrobatics check. Oh, oh, nice! <laughs> he <laughs> slinks you right <laughs> off of you. He said, Sorry, buddy! <laughs> See ya! Alright, you still have 10 feet of movement. I think you moved 30 feet and you lasso them. Yeah. 10 feet of movement. Okay. Um, We're gonna take that 10 feet. And we're gonna we're gonna back him up. Okay. Oh, Loki. Not far you enough. and I Not have been here enough. before. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm not gonna get far enough away. Fuck. <laughs> All right, Ballista, go ahead. 
I have nothing but bloodthirst when it comes down to me and Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So I'm gonna charge his ass the whole distance I can there. Alright. Oh man. Twenty-five wait, feet. If I if I move up wait, hang on. If I move up a little bit, can I get him head on? Yep. Move up like ten feet and then pew. Yeah, right there. Right there would be head on. <laughs> Alright, Maddie, give me a dexterity or strength saving throw DC 10 at disadvantage. Oh, I missed oh, it by one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were going to make that, dude. Wow. Oh. Damn. Maddie cannot hold the. You're holding onto the elephant's ears and he just shakes you off and you're thrown <laughs> off of the elephant. Lista, the winner, the winner. Go ahead and roll me a D thirty three. Or sorry, you get a silver ticket. A one. All right. No, she missed. It. Well, yeah. <laughs> you you just rolled a one because he typed it wrong. Oh, I did. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there was a space after the one there. So it's supposed to be forward slash roll space 1d33, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Sorry, I have to, like, count. <laughs> okay, you pull out, totally randomly, you pull out a very, very nice hat but the hat is uh it, it is adorned in feathers um a couple feathers and what looks like a rat tail you're given a, a hat of vermin hat of vermin that's what you get oh my god Valtrina would love this. yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> you get wrong character <laughs> <laughs> get the robe of many things i think right What? In that one shot, she had a robe of many things, right? Oh, Edith did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or stars or whatever. Robe of stars. I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> that item, I just looked up what that is. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it is pretty funny. Okay. So, that's the victor of... Bumper elephants enjoying some nice quiet time after a horrific event in the alchemist home. That is where we will pick it up next time, my friends. Thank you for playing, and I hope you enjoyed the carnival. Still, more games to play. Uh, yeah. Hey, getting me the carnival was great. Nice. I got to yoink, knock this off of an elephant. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome. Walking out of the carnival tent, like holding his back. <laughs> Very much. That one hurt. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Eddie. Yeah, yeah little, that was great. Little, little little chill. Thank you for giving us the the you know the calm and the peace and the entertainment after <laughs> trauma. So <you> know. <laughs> yeah, sorry it was all RP and poking around town, but it's always necessary. And now we've got a carnival. You still got plenty of games to play at the carnival. Hungry, hungry Hydra, High Striker. And of course, a pie eating contest. But yeah, we will find out next time how that goes. Yeah, thank you all for playing. Let's see if there's any um, any D and D people around still streaming. I gave you guys a little taste of uh, you know, being a little shithead. Oh, I thought for sure you were dead. I thought if that thing yeah, gets you know, in range of you, you were done. I really hard game. <laughs> I was like, damn, is no, it? No, I, I kind of, I mean, I, I knew enough. I was just kind of... Didn't want to make you think like, that you, you know, had that the wrong way. So. Mischievous shit. You could have tried to 1v1 it. Oh, I, would, I, I wouldn't have, though. It wasn't the whole point. I was just like, you know, he was in a bad mood because he got picked on. He's like, I want to go fight a troll. And then I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> The moment Eddie was like, still a man strong enough, heals up. I said, oh shit, please run, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Once he said that, that's when I was like, all right, I'm out. Sorry, nope, still nope, looking nope. For somebody, yeah. 
I thought the city guard might have done something more than get squashed. Dude. I mean, they saved your ass. Like, stop the troll, right? Yeah, a group of yeah, them did come out like, and eventually stopped, stopped them. <laughs> Distracted, baby. <laughs> I don't know if this stopped it. <laughs> Gave me some, like, leeway to get the hell away. <laughs> Just do a boss. You said this kind of without like, resting. Now we need to find the troll's body. Your, your boy, Post the druid on the, the show, and they're out of spells. <laughs> All right. Looks like this person is currently adventuring their way into out of the abyss. I think we're going to try to raid them. So everyone, say hello and thank you all again for playing. Let's see if I can do this right. Alex Sprock. All right. So have a good night, everyone. I have been Uncle Eddie, and I have been your dungeon master. Enjoy your day. Yeah. Okay. Ten seconds. <laughs> right. So every time you do this, Josh, you make a shake by, and then we got a city every ten seconds. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Bye. There we go. <laughs>